identity and purpose. Again, my name is John Simmons, and while I am the media director here at the church, that's not my only identity. I've had many identities over my life. In fact, I believe that God has given each one of you and everybody listening an identity and a desire to find that identity and purpose. So identity and purpose is the title of today's message. So everybody say identity. identity. Everybody say purpose. purpose. Identity and purpose is the goal of the message today. So let's talk about the different identities that I was searching for in my life. Let's talk about five-year-old Johnny Simmons. What do you think he was doing? Oh, my little man, you see him? Look at this guy. He's got his whole life ahead of him. Five years old, his identity, I wanted to be a ninja. <laughs> Anybody else want to be a ninja? Karate Kid came out, Daniel LaRusso, I was ready. I was ready to take after my favorite movie star. But it didn't last, because as I grew older, my identity changed. My desires and my heart changed. And then I wanted to be a rock star. Did you guys know that? Look at this guy. Oh my goodness, what am I doing showing these pictures? Teenage Johnny Simmons got a guitar at the age of 12 years old. It was the best Christmas gift I ever got in my whole life. I had been begging mom, mom, can I please get that guitar? Can I please get it? And boy, it was underneath the tree that year. 12 years old, got that guitar. I played that guitar every day for the next 10 years or so. It was my identity. I knew that I knew that I knew I was going to be a rock star. Okay, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's the truth of it. But eventually, as I got older and you start getting away from things, you start looking at different things in your life, eventually I decided, well, maybe I don't want to be a rock star anymore. Maybe I want to be in radio. And so I went to a trade school for radio right here in St. Louis called Broadcast Center. Everybody say Broadcast Center. They told me all the things that I needed to know about going on the radio, but what they didn't teach me was about identity. They taught me the skills to do the thing that I needed to do, but they didn't teach me the heart part about why I was doing the things that I was doing. Everybody say identity, identity. and purpose. That is the message of today. We are trying to discover who we are in Christ. And so for me, I chased a lot of identity long before God showed up in my life because as a radio guy, eventually I decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do either. What happened next, it was a tough road because in 2000, early 2000s, I saw on TV, ESPN, something called the World Series of Poker. Anybody ever heard of Texas Hold'em? Texas Hold'em, yeah, Texas Hold'em. It was the, the game of the year that year because a man named Chris Moneymaker, this is his real name, can't make this stuff up, he won, he turned $40 into $2.5 million playing a poker tournament on, in Las Vegas. This was an inspiration to me as a young man in radio trying to find my identity and purpose, and you know what I said? Hey, I got $40. Right? Anybody else got forty dollars? Turn this into something, right? So my new identity as a young twenty-year-old became: I want to find and become a professional poker player. And so I went to Las Vegas for my twenty-first birthday. I fell in love with the atmosphere, the love of putting on your sunglasses and bluffing the pot, and going all in, and scooping some of those pots and stacking your chips up. This really spoke to what. I needed in my heart, which is just to wake up and do something with my life. Now, little did I know that doing these things were going to cause destruction, chaos, frustration, anger, bring me to a place where I was almost ready to take my own life. Ten years, ten years, I sat in addiction trying to chase the dream that that young boy saw when I was 20 years old and I saw that guy win all that money on TV. Identity and purpose. I believe that God has an identity and a purpose for each one of us, but it's hard for us to understand that when you don't have Christ. You're searching for things that you don't understand how to get there. You're searching and trying to find your own mental ability to answer the question, what is the life I'm meant to have? And for me, I wasn't finding it. I wasn't finding it. I was broke. I was a loser. I lost relationships, friendships. My family didn't want to talk to me because my addiction, my 10 year long addiction caused me to burn bridges, caused me to lose money. In my early 20s, I had to file bankruptcy. I lost over a half a million dollars. And by the time I was 30 years old, I woke up and I thought back to little Johnny, little guitar, you see here, I used to work at the casino too. This is what depression looks like, by the way. For 10 years, you couldn't find a picture with me with a smile on my face. This is, what, this is me at the racetrack, my beer, my cigarettes. Ready to go. This is what the old John used to look like. New John. John. Okay. But <laughs> how did I become the new John, right? At the, end of, 
at the end of this, I woke up and said, God, what is the life I'm meant to have? Because I'd never talked to God before, and I was suicidal and very angry with what my life had turned out to. So I, I sat on the edge of my bed, cried out, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life because I just don't have one anymore. And in that moment, I heard this thought, the kingdom of heaven is upon you. The kingdom of heaven is upon you. And I heard this, and this was, this was a unusual text, unusual wording, unusual thought. So I ran out of my room. I thought I was going crazy. I thought that all my depression and all my frustration and anger, I thought I was starting to hear voices. And so I ran out of the room. I was like, I got to get out of here. But then what happened? I ran into my living room where I was staying, and this called to me on a shelf. This is my dad's Bible. My dad died when I was 12 years old, heart attack. This was one of the things he gave me his watch and his wedding ring, still wear him today. I never opened this Bible though, never, not once. But I opened it up that night and I got a couple sentences down and it said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is upon you. That same thing I just heard in my mind a moment ago was now speaking to me on the pages of this book. And I felt this warmth come over me that I cannot describe to you. It's just like a blanket of warmth. And I knew that I knew in that moment that God was talking to me and he was real. I began to read more and more of what this book said. And all I could think of was all the people who told me the Bible is a book for old people. It's a book of rules. You can't even read the thing or understand it. In that moment, I was having the exact opposite. Those words were jumping off the page into my heart. So that night I cried out to God, God, I messed up. I've been gambling. I've been doing all these things that I wanted to do. I haven't done nothing you wanted me to do. And so I just felt, as I prayed, I felt all the weight of a decade of addiction and frustration and anger start to slip off my shoulders. And that's a lot of weight, guys. It felt very freeing. And so I began to dive into my word. And that's what allowed me to get on a path that we're going to talk about today, identity and purpose. So that's how I used to be. That's how I got to a place where I could ask God what his plans for me are. But let's look at God's word to show you that everybody has a plan from God. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Remember, Ephesians is the book that I've used from God to be able to talk about God's plans for our life. For we, say we, are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Okay, so first thing that's got to happen when you're doing good works is you have to have Christ Jesus, right? So Christ Jesus, if he's not in your life, finding your identity and your purpose is going to be very, very, very difficult. And so as I went on a journey to discover what God's plan was for my life, and it took a lot of, it took a lot of steps and a lot of things had to happen. I'm going to share some of those things with you today. Uh, he taught me three things. And in 2013, God told me I was going to tell other people how to write God's sentence for their lives. A couple of years ago, the book came out. God has a sentence for your life, and this is what we're talking about, some of the lessons in this book today. But before I wrote the book, I had to live the book, right? I had to discover what it was that I could tell other people to do. And there's three things that I'm going to share with you guys today, three points, three takeaways that I want you to leave with when you're leaving here and you're going, what was that message about? Passion, vision, and faith. Say it again. Passion, vision, and faith. You need a passion for God. You need a vision from God, and you need the faith to walk it out. I'm going to say that one more time. You need a passion for God, a vision from God, and the faith to walk it out, okay? So there's three things that you can do to discover God's sentence for your life. You might call it writing God's plan for your life. You might call it finding what God has for me, his identity, his purpose. It's the most important thing I believe that we can find as believers outside of salvation because so many people, once they get saved don't know what to do next. And this is what to do next. Pastor Aeneas talks about purpose. He says, where purpose is not known, uh, he says, uh, what is he say? Abuse. Abuse is inevitable. That's right. Abuse is inevitable. He says this all the time. And it's so true because when I was a young boy gambling, <laughs> abuse was coming, you know, and I abused my identity. Uh, and what happened was I lost all that money, but I eventually said, God, what is the plan you have for me? Passion, vision, faith. So I walked out. What is passion? What is passion? There's two definitions here on the screen about passion. Number one is a strong or a powerful emotion. Uh, There are four definitions in the Bible that talk about strong or powerful emotions. They are love, hate, joy, and anger. Uh, The way that I describe this 
uh, in terms of how we walk out our identity is that strong or powerful emotions help us make life-changing choices. Those things allow us to then walk out God's plan. Because if, let me tell you something. If you're going to walk out God's plan, you're going to have to make a life-changing choice. Okay? Second definition, and the one we're going to spend the most time on here on passion, the suffering works of Christ on the cross. Everybody say passion. We're trying to find a passion for God. Do you think Jesus had passion? I'm going to say that he did because it's where we get our term, the passion of the Christ, right? When he died on the cross for us, he showed us an example of passion, so much so that they defined the word after him, okay? Jesus had passion. Talking about walking in your identity. Jesus had to walk in his identity. He had to walk in his purpose. You have to walk in your purpose. I have to walk in my purpose once we get Jesus in our life. So Jesus is showing us the example of walking in passion. So uh, another, another example of passion would be the passions of the things that you love to do. Like I love, I love to play guitar. I love to uh, play poker, although that's not something I'm condoning, right? You love to do those things, and they cause you to make life-changing choices. So here we go. We need both a passion for God and passions from God. So when we talk about having a passion and we look at Jesus' example, the best example that he gives us is when he's in the garden getting ready to uh, go be crucified on the cross. And he goes and all his friends are asleep and he goes off to pray, right? And he says, God, can you take this cup of suffering for me? And this was one of the first things that I remember thinking in terms of Jesus walking out his purpose. Why did he ask twice? Why did he go back? Because we all think Jesus knew exactly what to do all the times. And, and it confused me a lot as I'm reading my Bible wondering, well, why did he go back a third time and say, God, can you please take this cup of suffering from me? Can you please take it? And it made me think as I'm talking about purpose and identity that Jesus heard from God that no, I'm not taking this away from you. You need to go on the cross. You need to die for mankind and the sins of all man. You need to go and do that. And Jesus had the faith to go and step out and do that. He was both God and man, right? But in terms of finding our identity and our purpose, I think Jesus didn't sin. Well, maybe it's all right to go to God and say, God, are you sure that we're supposed to be doing this? Are you sure that this plan is from you? Are you sure that the thing you're asking me to do is what you have for me? Because sometimes when you're trying to walk out your purpose in life, you're going to have questions. You're going to wonder if you're doing the right thing. You have seasons where nothing's happening, nothing at all. For me, finding passion was about finding a passion for God. So what Jesus did in that prayer at Gethsemane and as he died for our sins, he showed that he had so much passion for God. And this is the best part. He had so much passion for God. He was willing to do whatever it took, go wherever he was called, do whatever he was asked to do because he loved God. Strong or powerful emotion. He loved God so much he was willing to do whatever he needed him to do to fulfill his purpose. How many of us are willing to say, I'm ready to do whatever it takes, whatever you want me to do, Lord, wherever you want me to go, whatever your plan is for me, I'm ready to step on the boat. When he's talking about doing these big things and you go, are you sure? <laughs> so when we're talking about finding our purpose, our identity, passion is the first place to start because it's an internal question. Do I love God this much? Am I ready? Because for me, as a young believer, when I first opened this Bible, and by the way, when I went to church for the first time, uh, a couple months after I got born again, uh, on, in September of 2012, I remember walking around with my Bible because I was reading it. I was getting out stuff out of it. I loved my Bible. But I thought, this Bible is just for me. I don't really need to go to church. Anybody, anybody been, I don't need to go to church today. That's the place where they take all your money. And I ain't even got no money. I'm broke. I'm a broke gambler. So in that moment, I realized, but maybe I need some of that. Maybe I need to hear what God has for me there. So I ended up at a church in this first, in this first day, changed my life. The very first church service I went to was a church on the rock in St. Peter's. And I ended up spending two years there, but I walked in, talk about finding passion, right? I walked in and all the lights are off, uh, very similar to how we worship. Lights are off, the words are on the screen, everybody's got their hands up, singing to the Lord, and I have never in my entire life been so uncomfortable as I was in that moment. <laughs> I came, the only time I'd ever been to church was as a kid, the Baptist church, we didn't clap, we didn't raise our hands, we read out of a book, <laughs> the hymns, and I was, this, it was completely different than anything I'd ever experienced before. 
and I wanted to get out of there as quick as I could. I dug my fingers in the pew in front of me. I was like, you ain't getting me to raise my hand right here. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. But today, if you saw, find a passion for God. John Simmons knows how to worship. That's something you have to grow in, something you have to build up. Do I love God enough to raise my hands and say, hallelujah? <laughs> Finding a passion for God. In that first service, Pastor Blunt said something that changed the trajectory of my life, led to the creation of this book and the ministry that I have called Testimony House. He says, if you're a Christian, you... And I felt like he was pointing right at me. I said, that's me. I got, I got, I got the book. I said, I said, Jesus, come into my life. You know, I was, I, but then he said, God has a plan for you. And I said, he, he does? This was revelation knowledge. Sometimes we don't know God has a plan for us. For somebody like me who was chasing identity his whole life, it was the first time somebody put into words what I had been doing my whole life. Looking for something. Looking for something to do. Looking for something to experience. But then he said, you need to pray and ask for it. Oh, why is that important? It's important for someone like me because up until that moment, the only thing I had ever prayed for, ever, was food. Lord, bless this food. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Getting taught something so simple could change my life, and I'll show you how. Jeremiah 29, 11, this is the verse that he used. Everybody knows this one, right? Everyone. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. This is the prayer I prayed, by the way, on the edge of my bed. God, give me a future and a hope for my life because I just don't see one anymore. This is what he answered with. And we all know this one. We all know this one. But we're talking about prayer. And he says you need to pray and ask God for it. Why? Jeremiah 29, 12, not often quoted. In those days when you pray, I will listen. What days? Go back. The days where he has plans for you, right? I have plans for you. And in those days, when you pray, I will answer. So when you are ready to walk out God's vision for your life, what do you need to do? And what happens when you pray? He will answer. I want a vision for my life, God, because that's what started happening. I prayed every moment <laughs> that, I, that I could think to remember. From that moment on, when Pastor Blunt said, you start praying and asking God for it. I said, God, what's your vision for my life? I got really excited. Not only did he have a vision for my life, but for me, God died on the cross for me. I can't believe that he also has something for me to do. If he was willing to die on the cross for me, aren't I willing to live my life for him? Right? That's what I thought in my mind. I was ready. I was excited. For the first time in my life, a light bulb went off. John, you have an important thing to do on this earth, but you have no idea what it is. No idea. But you got to pray. <laughs> And I will listen. Lord, what is your vision for my life? Lord, what is your vision for my life? I got irritating. Lord, what is your vision for my life? Lord, and it's all I knew to do. He said, pray. He said, pray. And so I just kept doing it. Six months, six months before God revealed that I was going to start a ministry called Testimony House. It's going to be a Christian learning center. I was going to share my story. How do I know it was God when he finally told me? Because he said, John, you're going to start a ministry. And I said, what's a ministry? <laughs> because I was not in the church my whole life. I didn't know these terms. I was going to church on the rock. I was serving on the parking lot ministry. Hey, everybody, come on in. Right? I thought that's what God wanted me to do. I was like, you want me to stand on the parking lot and do the parking lot ministry? That's not a real purpose. At least it wasn't what I was expecting. So God had to reveal to me, no, it's more than that. It's more than that. And he had to show me and download and, and eventually became Testimony House where we have made thousands of videos. We've done revival events. Uh, we've written books. We've done uh, small group guides. We've had our testimony on 700 Club and Guidepost Magazine and all these different things. God did all that through the story of me trying to find purpose, right? And so that's why I want to implore you, today's message is not just about what God has done in my life, it's what he can do for you guys. Because no matter where you are in your Christian walk, whether you are the, the elder of the church or you just walked in, he's always got more for you to do. When I was praying for my vision from God and I, he gave me the vision for Testimony House, I had to start walking out by faith. But my vision today is different than it was 10 years ago. Today my vision is trying to make a, an anti-gambling movie and we're doing documentaries and different things for Testimony House. 
I would have no idea that was on the radar back then, though, right? And for you, wherever you're at, what's the thing God has for you five years ago is not the same thing he has for you today, nor will it be the thing that he has for you later. Pastor's vision to start the church in his basement is not the same vision he has for the church today, right? Initially, his vision was like, let's just get going, right? Let's start this thing. So vision, we talk about in those days, this is it. Without a vision, your life goes bad. Proverbs 2019, without a vision, people perish. We've, we've heard it. Most of us have heard that. Without a vision, people perish. I like to remind people, though, that perish just means to go bad. Your life isn't ruined. Your life is just bad. It's just not what you want it to be. Perishable food. You don't want to eat the food that's been out too long. It's gone bad, right? We don't want to do it. So when you talk about your life, the life that I lived when I was in addiction, the life that I lived before I even got into addiction, it just wasn't good. Ephesians 2.10 said we were created to do what? Good works. Good things through Christ Jesus. So when we talk about a vision, if you don't have one, your life goes bad. So we're trying to find passion and we're trying to find vision. So a passion was being able to be ready to do for God whatever he needs us to do whenever he needs us to do it. Getting our heart in a place where we know that we know that we know that we're willing and able to follow God, right? then you got to start praying, God, what, what is it you want me to do? Because it's nice to have passion for God. I'm ready to go to church. I'm ready to serve on the usher team. I'm ready to do these things, but I don't know where to push my energy. So I got to pray and ask God, God, exactly what do you have for me? Because I don't know. Writing and prayer is the key to unlocking vision for your life. Writing it down. Pastor shares this all the time. He's shown the notes. Uh, when I heard my first message on vision, it's the first time I ever wrote a vision list, 2013. And in fact, it's still on my phone today. God, I want a wife. God, I want a bulldog. <laughs> God, I want a ministry. God, I want to know what you want me to do with my, like I, I wrote down all these things. God, I want to lose 40 pounds. Whatever it is, I started writing it down. I had a list a mile long of the things that I was just believing for. And it wasn't things that you might want for me, it was things I wanted for myself. Selfish or not, I was talking to God. I was in a relationship with God. God, this is what I want. My vision is for you to show me what I need. In the meantime, I'm writing down the things that I want. And Psalms 37 says that he will guarantee the desires of your heart. By the way, same. So we found a, a passion for God, so we're ready to serve God. Now we need a vision. We started praying. We've asked God, God, what is it? What do you need me to do? And then he reveals it to you. Mark Twain says it this way. He says, the two greatest days of your life, the day you were born and the day you find out why. Anybody here? I don't want to make you raise your hands, but have you ever found out why you're here? It'll change everything. It'll change everything. It'll make you wake up in the morning so excited to go to a job you don't want to be at, serve people you don't want to serve, do things that you have no idea how to do. It'll motivate you in ways you never, ever understood the moment before. It changes everything. When God told me, John, you need to start a ministry called Testimony House, and I said, what the heck is a ministry? I had no idea what I needed to do next. But the Bible told us, and I'm sharing my three points today, passion, vision, what's next? Faith. Faith. This was a very confusing term for me, reading my Bible the first time. Young believer, 30 years old, faith, Hebrews 1, Hebrews 11, 1. And as I read it, I hadn't read the whole thing yet. I hadn't got to this this verse, okay? And I started to think, well, I got to do this testimony house thing. I don't know how I'm going to do it, though. Well, you got to stand by faith. The pastors would say, go out in faith. What the heck is faith? I saw the disciples get scolded. They're like, ye have little faith. When will your faith be good enough? And I'm thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. These guys quit their jobs to follow Jesus. They left their family behind. They didn't know what they were doing or who this guy was, except that they knew that they knew that he was God and they were going to follow him. They had passion, right? These disciples had passion for God. They didn't know how to walk out that faith part. They were learning it. And that's what you need to do. That's what I had to do. We got to learn out. The Bible says, go faith to faith, glory to glory. We have to learn what faith is. And when I came to this verse in my Bible, this is the translation is new English Bible. It was again, another light bulb revelation moment in my life. What is faith? This was the prayer I'd been praying God, I don't know how I can walk out by faith. I don't even know what it is. And I came to this verse and it changed my whole life. Again, God continues to change my life when I chase his purpose and identity. Faith gives substance to our hopes. 
substance. It's real. Your hopes become real. Your ministry idea becomes real. Your job idea becomes real. The thing that you want to create becomes real. The art that you want to make becomes real, becomes substance, makes us certain of realities we do not see. I didn't see a wife. I didn't see a ministry. I didn't see myself standing on front of a platform. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, John, what do you want to do with your life? I would not have said one thing about ministry, about writing a book, about sharing my testimony, about being in front of others. That was not a thing. I wanted to be in radio. I wanted to be the guy you heard. Just talking about music. That's not even that deep, right? But what is faith? You have to walk this out. What did faith look like for me? I'm in Testimony House. We've started it. We've been having meetings in my apartment at the time, and I'm still working at the casino. I worked at the casino for nearly a decade. I'm born again, but I'm at the casino. I'm still around my addiction. God's breaking me free of my addiction. Didn't have an overnight, by the way. It took me, it was five months from the day that I got born again until God delivered me from my addiction. I tell everybody an act of addiction that I counselor, that I minister to. The best way to fight out of addiction is to find your purpose. Because once you have a place to go, you don't need to go back to where you've been. So what did that look like for me? Trying to walk out Testimony House. God eventually said, I need you to quit your job. All right. I was working at the casino. Debt's a mile long. Like I said, I lost a lot of money. I owed a lot of people. Bankruptcy didn't wipe out everything. And then I got into sports gambling. That was another anchor on my body that allowed me to continue to lose even after I signed myself off of the boats and I couldn't even go in anymore. They'd arrest me to try and keep myself from doing the things I was compelled to do. He says, I need you to quit your job. I don't know about that, God, because I was making, listen to this, $90,000 my last year dealing poker. Dealing poker. And I, that was like, I was working like 20 hours a week. I wasn't even working a lot. There was a lot of money back there. It was called the poker boom. You could become a millionaire, become, lose a million. And he said, you got to quit the job. But I, this money, it's all I knew how to do. For 10 years, it's all I'd done. What, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Well, I've called you to start a ministry. I need you to step out in faith. Mm, what is faith, Lauren? I don't know. <laughs> Substance and hope and certainty. Well, okay. So on May 5th, 2013, I quit my job at the casino. I got baptized. I think we got a picture of that. Uh, baptized at Church on the Rock. It's the day I quit my job. There I am. Ooh, new John Simmons right there. By the way, I, I got a job in radio years later, uh, by the way, uh, a Christian radio station here in St. Louis. This is the opposite of what depression looks like. This is so walk in your purpose. But God wanted me to quit my job. And that's a hard thing to do when you're making money and you've got bills to pay. That's a, that's a tough ask. And so I prayed for confirmation. Anybody ever pray for confirmation? <laughs> hey, Jesus, I'm going to need you to tell me. <laughs> yeah. And so there's these trucks. And I don't want to belabor this time, but there's these trucks that drive on the highway, and they have Bible verses on them. And one day I'm driving to work, and I'm listening to a sermon on the radio, and the sermon on the radio says, if God has called you to quit your job, you need to quit your job. And I'm like... And so I end up in the slow lane. I'm listening to this guy talk to me, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm trusting you. God had already talked to me. I look up, and there's a truck in front of me, and it says, faith. The word faith is just printed on it. And I'm like, it had a Bible verse, too. I forget which verse it was, though. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I felt God on me, but I was still like, no, nope, I'm not, nope, 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 good one, good one, God, but this is not, not for me. When I got to work, 20 minutes later, I get a phone call from a good Christian friend of mine. And he said, John, when I was praying this morning, God told me to tell you you need to quit your job. <laughs> and you can come live with me because you're not going to have no rent to pay. <laughs> I walked in, I said, all right, I'm leaving. And I didn't know where I was going. How many of us in life wonder where we're going? God told me what I was going to do, but I didn't know where I was going. And I had all these things in my mind about what I thought God was going to do with my life. Even at that moment, I was like, all right, God, you're going to have me quit my job. I got this little money from this 401k. By the time it runs out, 
I'm going to have a job doing some Christian thing, some church or so, some, somewhere I'm going to be making some money. I didn't make a paycheck for 18 more months. 18 months to learn how to live by faith. Because the first time my bill came due that I had no money for, that was a tough day. That was a tough day for me and God. I said, God, I've been living like you told me. I quit my job for you. You got you to gotta come through on this one. I got the, my car notes due today. I don't have the money for it. My money, I'm zeroed. I did this for you, though. You told me to do this. And I heard him say, check your mailbox. And inside was a letter and a check. It said, we sold some furniture, heard you in ministry. Here you go. And that became the first of many events that happened. We got a check. <laughs> you can clap for that, but it gets better. <laughs> uh, talking about I played poker, dealt poker, and walking by faith. We got a letter, another letter in my mailbox from a poker player who I didn't know. After I'd left the casino and quit to start the ministry, other poker players and poker dealers started telling my story. By the way, while I was, after I got born again and while I was at the casino, I started sharing Jesus with people. A bunch of my people that I talked to ended up going to church. One of them ended up at Megan's church. That's how I met her. Okay, that's my wife, by the way, my beautiful wife, Megan. So I'm wondering what it is that God has for me. But when I'm at the, where was I? I lost my story. Does that ever happen to you sometimes? Yeah, oh yeah, the check, the check. A check, and they said, uh, we heard about your story. God wanted us to sow our tournament winnings into your ministry. I read the letter before I saw the check, and I said to my friend was standing there, I said, it's a big check, ain't it? And he just looked at me and goes. <laughs> and I looked at that check, and I cried. What is faith? Certainty of the hopes that you have. Substance. I could hold a check in my hand. What is faith? That check ran our ministry for two years. God can do great things when you're walking out his purpose for your life. We don't always know how to find it. I'm trying to give you the blueprint. Where are you at in your walk? Do you need to find passion for God? What does that mean? It means get to church, get in your word, get in your prayer life, get in a community of other believers, do those things. Find a passion for God to where you get to a point where I will do it, God. I will do it. Maybe you're there. Maybe you've been at church. You prayed, you worshiped, you love God. You love God so much, but you ain't never had a vision. Jeremiah 29, 12. When you pray, I will answer. It's time to pray and ask God, what is your vision for my life? What is the life I was meant to have? Ephesians 2, 10 said we were created to do good works in Christ Jesus that he prepared in advance for you. Do you know that there's books in heaven? with your name on it. Hebrews 11, we're gonna go through this real quickly. God has a sentence for your life, okay? I wanna show it to you in a tangible way because it's not just you. It was everyone who we've heard a story about in the Bible. John walked by faith, but what else happened? It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain. They're walking by faith. Who was Abel before that? What was his vision before that? Where was his passions? He loved God. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up. We lost him over there, to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. It was by faith that Noah built a boat. It was by faith that Abraham left his, what, I mean, it was by faith that Sarah was still able to have a child. You can read those for yourself. It was by faith. Passion and vision are things that you have. Faith is something you gotta do. I gotta walk this out. I gotta go where God wants me to go. Where are you at in your life? Maybe you got that vision. What do you think the identity and purpose of these people looked like before God showed up. We tell their stories today, but do you think they would get up here and tell you who they were beforehand? Who are you beforehand? And who are you hoping to be? We're talking about living by faith. What is faith? What is faith? It's certainty of the things you have not seen. That is something you can't... It's, it's hard to walk in but what it looks like is this. You got your vision, I'm gonna go. 
I'm going to do it. What has God called you to do? If he hasn't called you again, we can just pray and ask for it. But let's say he gave it to you. I need you to write this book. I need you to believe for healing. I need you to trust me to start that business by faith. Let's take the step. Let's go out and do it. But I ain't got enough money, God. I didn't either. I have never read my Bible all the way through. Start a ministry. I still work at the casino. Go tell people how to get free of addiction. What is faith for you? I'm not where I want to be, God. But what can you do while you're there so that you can get ready for the thing he's going to call you to do? The two greatest days. The day you were born, the day you find out why. Does anybody else want to find out why? It'll change your future. And the most important thing you can learn about identity and purpose is this, is that it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. But more than that, it's going to change the lives of so many people around you. It's not just you you're finding your purpose for. My purpose for Testimony House isn't just for John to be able to have a place to go to work or a thing to do every day. It's that I can get myself invested in my gifts and callings from God so they can be beneficial to the kingdom, the body of Christ. When you wake up and you're motivated to do the thing that God has for you, you're going to affect others. Your purpose isn't about you. When you get to heaven and you ask God, well, I, you know, what was, I didn't know you had something for me. What if he showed you all the people that are going to miss out on things in their life because you were afraid to walk by faith? That'd be a hard one to hear. If he showed you all the lives you could have helped, all the people you could have set free from addiction and tried to help them. But you said, you know what? I'm not well ready to walk by faith. Hard to do. Hard to do. God, what, how do I get there? Trust. Faith, trust, synonymous. Got to trust him. Get your heart to a place where you can trust him. But there's not a greater day in your life than when you find out that God has a plan for you. And hopefully, for some of you, that could be today. That could be today. Find out your purpose by finding out who God has created you to be. Passion, vision, faith. Passion for God, a vision from God, and the faith to walk it out. That'll change your life and the life of everyone around you. Isn't that something worth doing for God? That's it. Thank you guys, appreciate you.